All right, welcome to the Ravid Show. We are here at Data Innovation Summit, and I have uh, David uh, with me, who's an independent consultant, author, and doing a lot in the data science and AI space. Uh, welcome to the Ravid Show. Thanks. Good to be here, uh, David. I know you have uh, talks, and uh, you've been doing that. Uh, uh, so I would love to know a little about that, but also just for our audience, would you like to introduce yourself? Tell us what you're working on. Uh, that would be interesting. Yeah, sure. So I'm from the U.S. originally. I've been living in Europe for the past 15, 20 years. Nice. Uh, formerly headed up global business analytics for the eBike Classifieds Group. And about 10 years ago, I left to start doing independent work, independent nice. consulting, in the field of data science, data strategy, program development, and such. Uh, so I've also been teaching part-time at the Amsterdam Business School, Fantastic. and I've written a couple of books on the topic. So this is my second time here at the Stockholm Conference, and uh, really excited to be here again. Okay, this is awesome, and uh, I always love to talk to you know the authors because you all have a, a little different perspective, but a lot of uh, educational content that you put out for uh, your, the audience out there. Uh, also, I know you uh, you know that you are speaking on the topic of responsible AI today. How did you choose that topic uh, for your talk today, and is that the primary focus of your own work too? Yeah, it's interesting. In the consulting work that I do, I see a lot of change in what's really important for companies mm -hmm. at different points in time. Right. So a few years ago, it was really about launching data strategies. Uh, last year, I talked about upskilling your staff, like promoting data literacy within your organization. Yeah. And I'm seeing interest in organizations over the past year on this topic of responsible AI, trustworthy AI, ethical AI. Right. And because I'm anyways doing work on it in my own practice, I Makes thought I'll do a talk on it at the summit. Yes, exactly. So thanks for sharing that. Also, what does the term responsible AI refer to and why is it important to the companies right now? What do you think? Yeah, so what we're seeing is because, like it used to be AI was sort of uh, like a small part of what you did. You did it for marketing, you did it for certain applications that weren't as core. But now we're using it in such core applications mm -hmm. that there's not the risk to make mistakes that there used to be. And so we're seeing, uh, for a number of reasons, a greater importance on responsible AI, or trustworthy AI, or some people just call it excellent AI, right? Because of the legal frameworks that are coming right. out, the GDPR, the EU AI Act. Yeah. It's compliance with those, it's higher product quality, things like that. There's a lot of things that go into that very general term. Okay, that's pretty interesting. That also brings me to another interesting question around, you know, I feel, Sometimes responsible AI in different regions and different countries is approached in a different way. But how do you look at it? And uh, because you work with, I'm pretty sure you work with a lot of like uh, companies in different countries too. So how do you see that approach there? Yeah, that's a good question. It, some of the core themes are similar, mm. but definitely the regulatory frameworks are different. Yes. Right. Because when you think about like trustworthy or responsible AI. Uh, yeah, part of that is complying with the laws and the regulations, and those are a lot tighter. They tend to be a lot tighter in certain geographies, especially in the EU, right. is really leading with the GDPR and the EU AI Act, mm -hmm. and so compliance is much, much stricter, but also people's expectations of what's done with their data is also different. You know, some people, some geographies have more expectations of privacy, invasiveness, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and so that's going to be different. So I would say a lot of the core parts of responsible AI, the things like reliability and security, those are going to be the same. Yeah. But some of the more nuanced parts, of, uh, things about you know what I share and what I'm allowed to do with your data, those are going to differ, especially between Europe um, and outside of Europe. That's pretty interesting. Also, that brings me to uh, something that I would love to learn is about if you have like two or three examples, or one or two examples as well that you can share where you've seen that, oh, AI has not been used responsibly here. Anything that you would like to share? Yeah, I would say, like with all the different attributes of like responsible AI, there's examples of it, right? Um, right? We had a big scandal in the Netherlands where I live now where the Dutch tax authority developed a uh, self-learning AI to flag who they were going to audit in fact, even worse, to flag who they, they were going to prosecute for tax evasion, yes. right? Yes. Um, and unfortunately, what happened is the AI that they were using for almost 15 years developed a bias, because it was self-learning, it developed oh. a bias against minorities and low income, right? So they started creating and prosecuting risk profiles just based on the biased AI they were using. So that was a really big scandal. Yeah. In fact, when that came to light, the entire Dutch government resigned back in 2021. 
Yeah. Yeah. So we're seeing that there. We're seeing it also in industries. There was a yes. case, uh, Zillow in the U.S. They decided that they would create a, um, an AI for pricing and take action, purchase decisions off that AI. Yeah. Um, and that was an extremely bad move because they did it during COVID when the pricing models were changing. Zillow lost nearly a billion dollars because of their AI making so many mistakes. Yeah, it's huge. It, like, if definitely if AI is not used responsibly, it, it it can go a long way and it can hurt the companies a lot. So, on that itself, I would love to know a little about. Do you have any you know approach or steps that you would like to share with our audience about how companies can actually use AI responsibly? Yeah, so the challenge, I think the biggest challenge we have now is when you look at the AI lifecycle in an organization, there's seven different steps. Mm -hmm. And if you just look at one business team, like just look at the data team or just look at the AI team, that's only one part of the process. Um, and I think where things often go wrong is at the business side, right? Where people are, where the business is conceptualizing applications or deploying or monitoring organizations. Right. So what I advise companies is, look, look across the whole AI lifecycle, starting with the business, and then you take a three-step approach towards it, towards implementing AI excellence, and that's the processes, the educational resources, and the core principles, right? Yes. So really start the ball rolling with those principles um, and take the concrete steps, but do it across the organization. Mm. I, I think that's a very good point in terms of, you know, obviously how you can uh, implement responsible AI in the organization, and it takes a while. How, how long do you think a company, say an enterprise, would take? And it can depend on various factors, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure about that, but how long ideally you would say for an AI, uh, for a company to actually implement AI responsibly? Yeah, it is definitely an ongoing process. Um, yeah. What I've done is to start with like a workshop with the, the senior leaders, right? Mm -hmm. So you have a workshop for an afternoon with the senior leaders, you get everyone on the same page, Right? Which is very important. And then you start moving forward with defining the principles, right? Mm -hmm. So that you can do probably a few weeks, start creating the educational resources, the core onboarding, the knowledge hubs, right? And that's going to be an ongoing process, ongoing process. Um, yeah. which is going to take months. And then it's just going to continue. The processes, refining it, any sort of change management, the bigger the organization, the more um, traditional it is, the longer it'll take. Um, but the idea is you can start making concrete steps really quickly Great. if you start at the top with the executives and get them on board. Okay, this is fantastic. Great information uh, on responsible AI and how, you know, obviously companies can uh, implement responsible AI in their systems. Uh, I'm pretty sure the audience would also love to know how they can connect with you, learn more about the topic, uh, and, you know, if they want to sign up for any of the courses that you're doing or uh, buy a book, where can they do that? Okay. Yeah, the books are on Amazon um, or from my website. Uh, the best way to get in touch with me is to go through my website, DSI Analytics. Yes. Um, you know, my email is just david at dsianalytics.com uh, when you'll find that on there. And yeah, just feel free to reach out there, of course, on LinkedIn if you search for David Stevenson. Uh, I'm one of the people you'll find. Thanks, David. Uh, it was such a pleasure chatting with you at Data Innovation Summit. Likewise. And uh, we'll keep the conversation going, but uh, all the best for your talk. Great. Thanks very much, Rafi. Thank you, everyone. For